kids, welcome back to Roto Talk. Kids, welcome back. This happy Friday morning is beautiful out. Um, one of my buddies asked me yesterday, uh, one of the guys in the group's building a V box. <clears throat> and uh, he's doing a real good job on it, looks great. But one of the things he asked me uh, if I could do a video on finishing, um, and I think I'm gonna, but I'm not going to do a video on painting. There are really, really good resources out there that I learned from. Now, back in the day when I used to build motorcycles, which was a big thing for me, I did it for, geez, from the age of 17 to 31, something like that. Uh, Ducati, well, no, I didn't build a Ducati, take that back. Moto Guzzi's, Triumphs, Harleys, Indians, um, Japanese bikes. If it was a bike, I pretty much built them and modified them, made drag bikes, yada, yada, yada. And I did know how to do auto body paint back then. Uh, but it's a little bit of a different different process. Um, there's a channel that I subscribe to called oh, Paint Society. And I'll put a link to his uh, channel down at the bottom. If you want to learn how to do auto body paint, watch this guy. He is He's out in California, I believe. Awesome. Awesome. I've learned so much from watching this guy. So I'm not going to do... And I still paint like a hack because all I've got is a paint tent for summertime. I do paint in 40 degree weather, which isn't good uh, in the winter time. I do paint, um, I try to keep bugs off of it, but I don't have a professional paint booth. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a hack at things. But to me, I love building boats. We all know that. And uh, I probably build more than I run. But um, the thing that annoys me the most out of building a boat, like my least favorite part, isn't even the sanding. I don't mind the sanding so much. Uh, is the frickin' ceiling, ceiling puttying, ceiling puttying, you know, whatever, and I still miss spots inevitably. I've, I've puttied this boat 8,000 times, and it's such a soft wood. It's not the normal wood. Hang on. I had a interruption. So this wood, like I was saying, is so soft that uh, is good and bad. It's great to sand. You can hand sand this thing all day, and it's just like, whoosh, comes right up. Uh, the problem is it dings easy, and it absorbs like a sponge, okay? So I'm going to start this series. I don't know if it's going to be a series necessarily. There's going to be multiple videos in it. Um, with, I'm not going to go through sanding. Uh, you, this is about sealing, using primer, not using primer. Do you seal first, then prime? Do you prime first, then see, you know, whatever the case may be. And I told my buddy yesterday, I said, it really depends on my mood. And I experiment uh, with it quite a bit. Um, and so far, I've had no boat failures. Um, I've done riggers where I sanded them super, 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 super smooth. Because the more you sand the more you knock down those pores. The more you just seal off those pores, the less they absorb, which in a, in a nature way kind of, it doesn't seal it, but it makes it less porous, obviously. Um, and then I've primered the crap out of them, painted them, and then I always automotive clear. I automotive clear every single boat I do, um, no matter what, no matter if it's electric, whatever, I do not use rattle can clear coat. I have used rattle can paint and then gone over it, just good old fashioned um, Rust-Oleum, which actually makes pretty good paint for rattle can. And there is a science to rattle canning well, and believe it or not, you can get a pretty nice finish if you use automotive clear over it. Now, I use a gun, uh, HPV, uh, gravity gun, for all of my painting. I have literally degassed uh, Rust-Oleum and poured it into a paint gun and sprayed it. Actually, Einstein, the original Einstein Thunderboat was green. That, was it? No, it wasn't Einstein the boat. It was the canopy, the cowl, which is still original. This right here uh, is rattle can paint that I sprayed out of a paint gun, and it worked really well, actually. Um, I don't recommend you do that. It's way more work than it's worth, but... <clears throat> If you warm up the can and degas and and you know you can actually get a nice, nice job. I'm the last person that should be giving advice on finishing because my finishes, some of them are really nice and some of them are okay. It depends how much I care about the boat, honestly. If I'm just building an electric rigger 
and I know I'm probably going to just beat the hell out of it. Or if I'm building a cracker box, I know I'm going to beat the hell out of it. I don't get real anal about it. Um, this boat, I would like it to look pretty nice. Um, hydroplanes, you know, stuff that you spend a lot of work on. and Or like my um, Thunderboat that's hanging in my office. This gorgeous paint job. Um, whatever the case may be. So I'm just going to give you some things that I've done and ideas that I've tried and you know if they work for you great or if you say if you guys have a better idea there's much much better people out there than me probably that know definitely that know sealing and whatever else now I'm going to go over some of the basics of uh, sealing processes okay the number one I would say that I've seen I don't visit boat forums hardly ever maybe two or three times a year I might get on there just to see what's going on on like offshore electric or whatever um, I can't stand boat forms for the most part. It's just too many egos floating about, I guess. I don't know what it is. but uh, And part of the process for me is I really like learning about from cause and effect and experimentation. Don't just because somebody says something, I tell this to my kids all the time, don't take it for gold. You know, educate yourself. You know, figure it out. Oh, that didn't work. I have scrapped entire boats before because I fucked them up so bad from experimenting that I'm like, yeah, we're not even going to fire pit. Um, and that's the fun thing about it because boat kits are reasonably cheap. You know, if you just, just the kit. Um, I have scrapped a couple in my life. But um, so I'm just going to give you some ideas. The number one sealing process, if you're going to make any wooden kit, it has to be sealed. You've seen this in my videos time and time again. Inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside. Um, whether they're gas or electric, it does not matter. The number one thing I've seen in, like, in forums or if you Google it or whatever the case is probably West Systems. Um, West Systems, I'm going to give you my opinion on it. It is a good product. It, it works really well for what it does. It's basically thin epoxy. I mean, let's be honest, it's... Now, yeah, thin epoxy. It's not resin. It's not fiberglass. Um, the thing I don't like about it, A, the number one thing is the expense. It, it's so damned expensive. It's 100 bucks almost for a quart. And to me, that's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I can buy a, a gallon of fiberglass for... And you get more than a gallon. You get like a gallon and a quart when, by the time you mix it all up. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's, it's a gallon. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of something else. Um, eh, I don't know. I just, it's hard for me. I don't like the work time. I don't like that it takes overnight to cure. Um, I don't love, I, I just don't love it. And I know a lot of guys swear by it. You've probably never seen me use it on this channel. I have used it many times. I probably have bought about six sets of it in the past. Um, and when I first got back into building boats, I did use it because I hadn't done boats in so long. There was so much new stuff out on the market that I wanted to learn about it and whatever. The expense is just ridiculous. If it was 35 bucks or even 50 bucks, 40 bucks a quart, maybe. Um, I don't like the way it's, it goes on. I don't know. There's just something about it. I never found the niche with it. Um, I've gotten good results. Don't get me wrong. I mean, but I really had to. I'm used to epoxy. I'm used to fiberglass. I'm used to, um, you know, body, you know, structural body fillers and um, fiberglass gels. And I'm pretty good with that stuff. And I just, eh, I don't know, West System. And if that's what you like, great. It's just, this is my opinion. Um, I think it's too damned expensive. That's And I don't like waiting overnight. Three hours is more than enough. Um, so I do it kind of the old-fashioned way, as you guys have seen many times in my videos before. So there's the pros and cons to West Systems. It's very waterproof because it's a two-part epoxy, essentially. Um, you can buy, you could probably go out and buy little bottles of epoxy, thin it out with alcohol, and get the exact same results as you do with West Systems. They sell you the fancy pumps with it and all this other shit. It's just too damned expensive. Uh, but it does work. I don't like the way it, it goes on. It's I don't know what it is. It's me. I'm sure there's guys out there that are fucking experts that could just spop it on there and it, it'd go all day. Um, I guess I'm, I'm not that guy. Uh, the old-fashioned way of doing it that we used to do um, back in the 80s and you know stuff like that. I'm 48, and I started building boats fairly early. I think the first boat I ever built was probably 1986, so I was like 12. And it was a little... 
Swamp Buggy by Dumas. You know, it had a little Cox 4.9 engine on it, but it was a birch plywood kit. And uh, I think it was, and you don't quote me on that. And I used Tower Hobbies, Epoxy, you know, it was just crazy. Because I used to be into RC cars and boats pretty heavy when I was a little kid. I built a Kyosho Altima uh, when it came out because um, I worked two jobs as a kid and I blew it on RC and guitar stuff. But um, anyhow, uh, in the olden days, what we used to do is we used to take two part clear coat, okay, 2K clear coat, like automotive, the stuff that gets you high kills you if you breathe it um and we used to seal boats with that stuff and we would usually brush it on or, or spray it um and that's what i've actually gone back to now the pros and cons to that and i'm going to be jumping back and forth and i know that this is going to be a long-winded video it's all about talking it's not you know i'm not going to be showing anything in this video i don't think uh but the nice the other nice thing about west systems i kind of forgot to mention is it does add some protection um any epoxy is rubbery. Epoxy, unless you've mixed it wrong, is never brittle. Whereas fiberglass is brittle-ish, okay? Just as a pure resin, anyway. <clears throat> so when you clear coat seal something, it works really, really well to seal the pores of the boat. This one is sealed. Um, and it goes on super smooth, very minimal rework as far as sanding goes. It's, it's really nice for that. However when you clear coat seal a boat you get zero structural protection or strength then one of the things i always tell you guys is if you're going to add weight add strength or add add another get two out of one get something for free okay um when you like this boat super super porous this type of wood that's made out of and i'm not used to this with a boat this is different for me um i put like six layers of clear coat on here and it's still I mean, there's some areas that are perfectly smooth, like a like finish, but you can still feel, you can hear it. Listen, I did not sand this yet, and that's like six layers. Now it's perfectly sealed. I can throw this thing in the water right now and run it all day. It's not going to rot. It's not going to swell. It's not going to get gross. But and, you know, it still needs sanded down, and then but there's no structural support whatsoever. So if, you know, if you ding this boat, it's going to leave a dent. That's the problem with clear coating for sealer um is it a problem no now the reason i like using it a i can apply it very 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 fast very well if it's a nice warm day 80 degrees and i set the the hull out in the sun it cures and you can pick it up in an hour and a half it fully cures in no less than three or no more than three on a nice day um I get a gallon and a quart for a hundred bucks. Actually, I don't even think it's a hundred bucks. I think it's like ninety bucks for the stuff I use, um, and it it just goes on super super smooth and it sands super super smooth. Now, something to think about with sealing. Um, the, the drawback to it doing it that way is not only do you not get structural support, but if you do hit something, or you get a really good ding in it, like your kid drops her toy on their boat or whatever the case may be, chances are good. If it cracks, not the wood, but like the finish, you can technically get water in there. It, you know, it, it doesn't adhere like an epoxy or a resin does. I have never, ever had a problem with doing my process the old-fashioned way. Never had a problem ever with dr boats rotting out or falling apart or, you know, whatever the case may be. I prefer that method. I like it because it sands easy, it sprays easy, um, and when you're spraying it, you don't have to spray it like you're doing a paint job. You can lay it on thick, because usually what you do with clear coat is you shoot it and you wait 10 minutes, if the temperature is around 70 degrees at least, and you wait 10 minutes, let it kick, and that's when all of the uh, activator, all the chemical in it evaporates off. Then you hit it again, but the next time you hit it, you go slower, okay? And you lay it on thicker because now you've got a sticky surface you're not going to get runs but the nice thing about using it as a sealer is you don't have to paint it like that i, I use the word paint but you spray it like that because you're gonna be sanding it anyway if you get a run or two here nobody gives a shit it's not on your top layer of paint this is a sealing coat so like for instance i can get any runs on this yesterday i shot it i let it sit for 10 minutes i shot it again I let it sit 10 minutes i shot it again you know it took me a couple hours actually um, and then I just let the whole thing bake and it's nice and sealed. I mean, I can pour water on this right now. It'll pool right up. That's not the issue. But the thing to think about when you're sealing a boat is that's not the only layer of protection that's getting. 
these guys get so anal about just da 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 da. You're going to seal it. Then you're probably going to prime it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Depends on the build. Um, then you're going to add two or three at least layers of paint. Probably the thickness of a, depending on what kind of paint you use, maybe a piece of paper. And then you're going to clear coat it two or, th I usually do a two, two layer clear coat at the end. Um, so now you've got two or three layers of sealer, a layer or two of primer usually, uh, two or three layers of paint usually, um, and then you've two two more at least layers of clear coat on this thing. It's sealed, guys. Even if you had a dry spot like right there, which there's not, but I'm just saying if there was one right there, I can feel, I see it the shit out of that thing. still feel it. Um, it's sealed. Well, let's not get stupid with it. This boat is not sitting at the dock all day just sitting there. I mean, use your head. This is, if you're going to go that crazy with it, buy a fiberglass hull and don't worry about it. And that goes, this goes for fiberglass hulls too, because your engine stringers are usually raw wood and you have to seal those. Now, if I'm sealing a small area, like say I'm just sealing these, I'm not going to spray clear coat in a fiberglass hull. I'm just, that's stupid. So sometimes I'll take epoxy, 30 minute epoxy, thin it so it's like water. And I'll put some tape down or whatever, and I just seal the if they're not already fiberglassed, like raw wood. Um, sometimes I'll do it that way. Sometimes I will take clear coat and brush it on. One thing I do <clears throat> when I seal the inside of a boat, and you guys have seen me do this before, I'll mix up clear coat and I will brush it on. Now, that's the first coat. I might brush it on two or three times, but usually after the brush on, then I spray it a couple of times. Brushing it in really puts it in there thick, and it really just saturates the hell out of it. Um, usually with your first coat, even if you're brushing it in, you see it pooling a little bit, give it a minute. It'll just soak right into that wood, and it's pretty thick. So that's, again, we're not talking about paint and finish here. We're talking about sealing. Um, so there's pros and cons to both. A, with the clear coat that I use, the Acme stuff, that's a stupid name, but it's actually made by... Uh, first first choice or first uh, race first or something I can't remember uh, Acme is just a gimme name but um, 100 bucks for a, a gallon and a quart because you have a quart of activator or kicker and then you've got a gallon of that it's much 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 cheaper it goes much farther if you build a boat a year it'll probably go bad before you even you know use it all up I go through two gallons a year probably but I do use it for a lot of stuff I'll clear coat 3d printed parts with it just to get rid of the just almost using it like a primer and seals it um, you know really really good stuff doesn't add any structural support whatsoever ever at all whereas West systems will at least give you a little bit um, so there's, you know, and I think it goes on much smoother. Your sanding, like if you seal with clear coat, your sanding process is so much easier if you do it right. Now you can just take 400 grit, go over it, boom, you're done. Um, <clears throat> pros and cons to both. Now, the other thing I've tried with sealing is, you've seen me do it on the channel a couple of times, with fiberglass resin. Um... I prefer fiberglass to be uh, for the inside of a boat, to be honest. Now, there are, I have seen a full, few schools of thought or heard of where people say never put fiberglass resin over epoxy. Like, you know, all your epoxy joints. Now, this boat was fiberglass on the inside, but it was also put together with um, epoxy. I have never had a problem with that, and I know people have said, uh, even Joe from Zipkits and his manual for the rigor, I think it even said, don't use fiberglass over epoxy, it's not good. I haven't had a problem with that. Um, maybe there's a thing there, I don't know. Um, if your fiberglass peels off of that, but I've never had that happen, so I don't, I don't know why people get that way with it. I have used fiberglass to put a boat together um, instead of using epoxy, which is actually really, really efficient and actually a much cleaner build to do it that way. Fiberglass will soak into wood like crazy, and once it bonds, it's crazy, crazy good. Um, I don't like using it on the outside to seal the boat because the inside's okay because, as you guys know, I don't give a shit what the inside looks like. 
and you're never going to get looking super pretty with fiberglass you know brushing it on anyway um, and I've looked into spraying fiberglass and that's just a mess and a half so I was like well, I don't want to do that I don't like doing it on the outside of a boat because the sanding process sanding fiberglass isn't the most fun you'll ever have at the zoo right so um, I still stick with clear coat on the out it's just how I did it but so there's another option for you um, I prefer fiberglassing the insides of boats doesn't add any much more weight than epoxy it seals it it adds strength much more strength than west systems it's much cheaper than west systems it's more toxic than west systems <laughs> west systems stinks but it's not like a like a a poison smell you know it's it's more like a an epoxy smell yeah it smells like epoxy um <clears throat> but because you're mixing it in a larger volume it, it reeks up a little bit but it, it's not the kind that gets you high like uh, uh fiberglass does uh so sunday we're putting up another video those are some of the sealing methods i've actually used let me backtrack i've actually used polyurethane believe it or not you know good old-fashioned minwax buy it at walmart polyurethane and some some of the things you have to take in consideration when you're layering all these chemicals up is will one stick to another and that was one of the the debates i had with not a debate but more of a test that i had with a buddy years ago i said i bet we can just use rattle can paint for five bucks a can do a nice paint job on it and put expensive clear coat over it and it'll look beautiful and it did um and it stuck just fine I use single stage primer, I use single stage paint with a dual stage clear and it worked perfect, never peeled, never popped, never faded, it was great. And I've seen many debates on this where it's like, oh, well, you can't use a hyper polymer gold plated woodpecker's pecker and a blue jay's ass and it, it won't work, it won't bomb, bullshit, it does. Now I'm sure if you take an oil based paint versus an enamel paint or a latex, you know, oil based paints are, you know, sketchy, but why the hell you would use one on a boat is beyond me. I've done it with stain. Stain your boat. That's oil based, essentially. It's you know, um, you stain it, let it dry for three days, shoot it with clear. It's gorgeous. I did it with my Thunderboat. It's you know, I didn't use a special clear coat. I still use automotive clear, and it's saturated just fine. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, but you got you still have to think about all these chemicals that you're layering up on top of things. Um, haven't had any real. I've never had a pain issue, which is really weird because I've painted some boats really, really poorly, and I've painted some boats fairly professionally, um, and because I know how to do it the right way, it just depends on my mood and what I'm doing. I build so many boats, it's not like I build a boat that's my baby and I just, you know, oh, this has to be perfect every time. It's not like that with me either. You know, after I kill a cracker at the end of the season, I gut it and build another one, you know. Um, so Sunday... I ordered, and I've tried one other thing before too, and that was the um, ultraviolet resin, epoxy, ultraviolet epoxy resin, and I hated it. It had zero strength. It um, was super thick for what I wanted. Uh, it was hobby grade. It was like for those chicks that, uh, not trying to be sexist, but you know, people that do crafts with epoxy. You know, usually that's a female thing where they. They take little molds and they put their kids' baby teeth in there, you know, whatever. Foreskin, whatever. Um, <clears throat> I hate it. I threw it away. I bought a little bottle like this big. And it did work. Uh, but I thought, man, this could be way better than epoxy. Because I could just put it on there and shoot it with the light. Or I could wait for half an hour, then shoot it with the light. Because it'll absorb into the wood. That's something you really want to think about. That is the difference between 30-minute epoxy and 5-minute epoxy. You know, and and uh, what's other shit I had? That sixteen, fifteen, whatever. <clears throat> you know, good old fashioned Bob Smith Industries, which this is just sold by a different crowd. Um, that's the difference. People don't get that. And uh, I've seen videos where it's like, oh, you don't want to absorb too much into the wood because of it. now that's the whole point. If you're going to thicken up thirty minute epoxy, to me is completely ridiculous, usually. I mean, yes, there might be an application or two, but if you're gonna thicken up 30, you might as well put on 10 and thicken it up because it, 30 minute, it cures slower and it gives the, the, ga the glue more time to sink into the wood, which is what you want. That's why when you see uh, zip kits, instructions, and all these other guys' instructions say, okay, on the deck and the bottoms, use 30 minute epoxy because you really want a strong bond there. 
Now, if you thin 10-minute epoxy, it's kind of almost the same principle. The problem is your bead isn't as thick, but it absorbs faster. It just depends on the joint you're doing and whatever else. So I always keep 30 and always keep 10 in stock. I use this stuff in a pinch because Bob Smith uh, Industries, this DevCon Home epoxy is two-part, just like anything else. Uh, and this is five minute. It's got 1,500 pound strength. Epoxy is epoxy, just about. Okay, not always, but this stuff I found, this DevCon, you get more and it's cheaper than Bob Smith Industries. It cures the same. I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, I like to stick to Bob Smith Industries, but uh, it was in a pinch. So anyway, getting back to the point, I'm, I digress. So the ultraviolet epoxy resin for building boats, don't even waste your time. I did it for you. I bought a $10 little bottle of schmutz and it came with a little, you know, cancer light, you know, UV light. And it did work. Like if you want to put your baby tooth in a freaking mold and shoot it, it, it does work, but there, it's useless for building. Don't, don't even bother. However, I also subscribe to a bunch of boat building um, channels. And these are real boats, not, but they're all wood and fiberglass boat builds, not speed boats usually. It's like sailboat, gel coat, fiberglass, restorations, and things like that. And I, I subscribe to a couple guys that are really clever, skill, skilled guys. And uh, I accidentally ran across, you know how YouTube is, they kick up crap they think you might like. And I accidentally ran across this one dude who's just a, I couldn't even tell you who he is, just kind of a nobody type of guy like me. And um, he was testing ultraviolet resin and I'm like hmm so basically think of it as fiberglass resin that you shoot a light at it and it cures and he was doing tests on it and I researched it today and yesterday a little bit and uh, he was getting cure times in three layers okay so three laminates so fiberglass then matte fiberglass resin then matte fiberglass resin then matte and he was getting a three-minute cure time with the, with the ultraviolet light. And I'm like, holy shit. This could be a game changer as far as I'm concerned. Because if I can, and, he's, and I, I, from what I read, I bought a quart of it. It's going to be here Sunday and I bought a flashlight, you know, the ultraviolet light. And from what I read, it's thin, like paint thin. I don't know can't imagine it's paint thin but whatever maybe latex paint thin but if i can I, we're going to do some experiments with it because if i can find a resin that is a little more eco-friendly than fiberglass in the sense of smell uh, because it does reek up in here in the winter time because i don't like having my door open and i got an open flame heater and all that crap and if I can cure it slow or I can cure it fast, which this there are methods to doing it with UV. You can pulse it. You can do whatever. <clears throat> they said it goes on super smooth, and it, it literally cures crystal clear. But it's fiberglass. It's not epoxy. And I'm thinking, hmm, if we seal a boat with this stuff, think about that. You could do, it's, it's not cheap, but it's not outrageous. It's 50 bucks a quart. So it's half the price. Actually, it was less than that. I'll take that back. It might have been 35 bucks a quart. So it's a third of the cost of West Systems. It's going to be stronger than epoxy. And uh, I can cure it when I want. I can do it in patches. I don't have to mix up a batch and worry about pot life, as long as you're not in direct sunlight, because direct sunlight has UV too. So say I just wanted to do a repair, or say I just wanted to uh, seal the top and not the bottom of this boat, I can take my time do the whole thing and then just hit it with the light. So we're gonna do some tests on this. I'm gonna do structural tests. So I'm gonna take scrap wood and we're actually gonna use it like an epoxy. We're gonna thicken it up with some micro balloons or whatever. And we're gonna thicken it up and we're gonna shoot it with the light and we're gonna test it. We're also gonna test, uh, they say it sands really nice. We'll see what happens with that. My theory is if it goes on smooth, it'll sand smooth. In most cases, I mean, unless you're putting on fricking something really heavy. Um, we're gonna do a structural test. We're gonna do a ceiling test. So the ceiling test, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a few pieces of scrap wood and we're going to seal it and UV it and we're gonna soak them underwater for an hour. And we're gonna then cut it and we're gonna crack it open and we're gonna look at the core. And I'll try to find, I don't know if I've got like chunky blocks, but we'll use thin boat stuff. 
thin boat stuff's realistic. Let's let's not. I'm not going to do a fucking two by four. I mean, think about how thick that is. But ceiling is ceiling is ceiling. If this stuff can work as a construction adhesive, I'm all about it. Because think about it. You could mix up, and I'm not saying it will. This is all speculative at this point. But I could take a mixing cup, mix it up, thicken it up to the point of epoxy, and just let it sit there. And I could brush it on. Okay, we're ready to do this. Bam, poof, shoot it with the light. Done. Or brush it on, let it sit for five minutes, let it soak in a bit. Boom, shoot it, and you're done. You could use it instead of CA glue, theoretically. Because CA glue, you have to hit it with kicker. Well, by the time I buy a $30 bottle of Big CA, I go through kicker like crazy. If I can just use this stuff, even for that, even if you can't use it for real structure, use it for tacking structure and sealing, it's worth it. So I'm, I'm trying not to get my hopes up, but I've got a feeling. Even if I can't use it for structural, but think about the game change that would be because then you could just put it on all this stuff take your time putting on deck tops if it worked well for deck tops and we're going to do some lamination tests we're going to take pieces of wood provided it seals properly which i can't imagine it won't <clears throat> and we're going to take two pieces of wood like a deck and we're going to seal them together that see how does that work though because you can't that might be something different because you can't get the ultraviolet light in there I don't know. They say it actually does, it's a dual cure method. You can actually put um, cap in it too. And we're gonna test that as well. So we're gonna take normal fiberglass hardener because they say it can be done that way too. And now if it works that way, we're gold. Then you can use it for the top, but I don't think you could use it with the top or a skin for the UV because you can't get the UV light to it. But again, I digress. So we could use it on our, anything you can get the light to it, you'll be okay. So for sealing, tacking, and construction, I'm just thinking, how many times do I mix mixing cups full of epoxy during a build? 50? The popsicle sticks, the cups, well, I use silicone cups now, um, all this other stuff. So I'm excited. I'm really hoping this, even if all it's good for is sealing, I'm excited because I have not found a process yet that I really like for sealing. The other problem with doing just clear coat versus West Systems, so West Systems coming out ahead in this one, bear with me, is when you have little tiny pox, this is a very porous wood, and I don't care how much you sand it, I'm probably going to have to prime this boat, we're going to see how it turns out, I got some compounds coming today, um, <clears throat> but clear coat is not going to fill any holes, It's in, in, in the sense of dense, or like if you missed a tiny little, like I can see a nick over here, tiny little nick, and if you're painting a dark color, that thing's going to pop out like a pop tart, it's just going to be all over the place. Um, so that's the other problem with clear coat versus wet. West systems will fill. It will, you know, it's an epoxy. It'll, it'll level up. Whereas clear coat is going to whoop and it ain't going to do shit. Uh, so your prep work for the clear coat, if you're going to seal with that, has to be much, much better. But again, you think this is sealer. So even you can go ahead and scuff all this down and sand it you're still going to apply a primer and do your normal gig. This is still just the ceiling, but every little bit helps. So like West Systems will fill divots. Okay, so it's like a foundation. It works pretty good. Uh, so I'm excited about this UV testing uh, stuff. The reviews I've read on it, uh, and I'm not even going to put a link in the description or anything until I test it out. And if it looks like it's a copacetic thing, I might be changing a lot of how I do builds and maybe we'll build a test boat with it and just really beat the crap out of it and make sure, I mean, I know epoxy fairly well. I've been building boats for a long time. I go through gallons of the shit a year, right? Um, I know how it holds. Like I can just try to break something apart and I can tell if it's been a good mix, a bad mix, a hot mix, a cold mix, whatever. Um, so I'll just be able to, you know, but we'll inspect it together. And we'll look at the the dynamics. Uh, you know, what's the elasticity like? What's the tensile strength like? Uh, you know, what's the the bonding properties like? What's the sealing properties like? You know, maybe we'll we'll subject it to chemicals. Um, well, if it seals really well against water, well, shit, let's soak it in my my parts washer, which is hundred degrees, and let's soak one in gasoline too, and let's see what happens. Um, and if it works well, then I'm gonna you know, be pretty happy with that. So we're going to see what happens. So for sealing, again, 
there's multiple ways of doing it. I am not an authority on West Systems in the sense of applying it. I'm sure in forums, uh, because all those guys in those forums, their way's the right way. Just ask them, they'll tell you. Um, <clears throat> And you know, oh, you use a roller. Oh, you use a brush. Oh, you you know, let it run down your middle finger and wag your hand, whatever. Um, I just I, I don't know. I don't love that. Um, I can't really tell you how to apply that. But with clear coat, what I do is I'll take my clear that you've seen me use in videos many many times, and it, clear is clear is clear. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, Joe and I were talking from Zip Kits one day, and he uses like four hundred dollar a gallon clear coat. I do not. I use hundred dollar. <laughs> it's it's still two part and everything. Let me see. I mean, it says Acme on it, but it's finished one products. They make good stuff. Um, overall, ultimate clear coat. You know, it it has a nice high gloss. Um, it's easy to apply. It's easy to control the kick. And what I mean by that is, even though I use a medium hardener in it. Um, I usually, instead of mixing four to one, four parts clear, one part hardener, I'll do three parts clear, one part hardener. So I tend to go through hardener a little bit more than I should. Um, but it kicks faster and uh, that's what I like. So it's just how I'm used to it. Um, I use my guns, our paint guns that are, you know, not super expensive, a couple hundred bucks. But I've also bought the Harbor Freight one for 30 bucks and used it and it worked damn near just as good. You have to be maybe a better painter to use it um you have to really know like the more expensive guns honestly are easier for novices <laughs> because they're they they work so well you can spray beautiful paint at 15 psi with an expensive gun my gun i'm shooting paint at 25 psi and i'm shooting clear at 35 yeah give or take um for paint a lot of times i use this stuff duplicolor paint shop you can get it at O'Reilly's Auto Shop, AutoZone, and uh, what's the other one? AutoZone and, oh, for God's, you know, the other one's like AutoZone, uh, Advance Auto. Uh, and even Napa sometimes carries this. This is not cheap. This stuff's like 31 bucks a can for a quart. Now, it, it covers a ton, and I thin it. Even though this is pre-mixed single stage, um, I still thin it, and it, it works really well. Uh, but... There are other, what is, what style is this? Yeah. Race Bay lacquer. Any lacquer will work. But paintings, there's there's a trick to it. And I really, so, so whether you're painting or sealing, experiment. You know, get, get some uh, scrap wood, shoot it, play with it if you're going to use a spray. Another way I was thinking, you could gel coat too uh, for sealing the outside of the boat. Eh. I'm going to try that one day because um, gel coat's kind of like a thicker fiberglass resin um, with a wax in it and it comes to the surface and it's, yeah, you know, you guys have all seen gel coat on whether you know it or not. Almost all boats have it. Real boats or f some fiberglass model hulls. Um, eh, I think there's a better way. Gel coat's a little bit more porous too, so I'm not sure. I don't think that would be real effective for sealing. Yes, it probably would, but gel coat goes over fiberglass usually. Um, putting straight gel coat on wood, never done it, but putting a porous material on a porous material doesn't sound like a bright thing to do. Uh, shoot me a comment if you've tried it. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's even, like I said, the Minwax polyurethane, it does work. Believe it or not, you go to Lowe's, buy a quart of the polyurethane, has to be the polyurethane. Don't buy that other, what's the other kind called? I can't remember, but it, it you know, you don't mix it with anything. You just stir it up don't shake it you stir it and then uh so you don't get air bubbles in it and then you just brush the living shit out of it up. the problem again even more with that is it takes forever to cure sometimes depending on the heat um adds absolutely zero strength of course like clear coat um it tends to be thinner and it you really have to put a lot of it on i mean to really seal it up but believe it or not you can use minwax um and go the cheap route as long as you do a decent paint job now our rigger that we're building here, okay, that's raw wood, all right? You can't do that with wax. Think about this, okay? That's raw wood. I did not paint that boat. Therefore, there's no primer. There's nothing on there <clears throat> except clear coat. But I clear coated the crap out of that thing. It's got like four thick layers on the outside 
and by the time you add it all up, I brushed the inside, probably ate on the inside. Um, <clears throat> you can't do that with minwax. If you if you take that polyurethane, I, well, I shouldn't say you can't. It probably wouldn't look too good when you got done. You'd have to put on you know half a gallon of the shit to make it waterproof. But if you put on min, minwax, then a, a proper primer over it, and then do your paint job, you'll probably be fine. I, I know I've done that before, and I'm trying to remember what boat... It, it's probably a tugboat because it's experimental. You know, I was just let's find a cheaper, easier, less messy way is what I'm trying to achieve here. I don't like having. I've got two part structural body filler that I use for putty. I have Durham's wood putty. I have fiberglass resin. I have five minute epoxy, thirty minute epoxy, clear coats, paints, epoxy brushes, popsicle sticks. Da -da 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 -da. And it doesn't sound that bad until you're constantly restocking all your stock. And it gets expensive. Just in finishing products alone, I could have built 50 gas boats. I mean, over the years that I've spent. Oh, and pour foam, which no way around that, unless you buy pool noodles, which I don't like. Uh, <clears throat> and the paints and all this stuff. So either way, um, that is a basic go over. And today what we're gonna do, after it comes in the mail, uh, we might, I might show you a sanding technique for using graphite powder to help you really get a decent sanding job. But that's just the basic go over. And as I do some sealing projects, and when we get that UV stuff Sunday, we're definitely doing videos on that, probably a series on that. But when the next boat that we seal, this one's already sealed, um, but the next ones we do, we're going to be videoing those for you guys. And I'll even I'll even talk you through the paint process. But again, I'm not going to show you how to use guns and stuff. Check out Paint Society. That dude's fucking brilliant with his paint jobs. It's just it's just makes you want to go paint stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll start doing that because I think that's an intimidating part of the build to me. I think you you put all this work into the structural build of your boat, the hardware, the setup whether it's electronic or electric or gas or whatever you're doing you put all this work into it and then knowing that you could fuck it up just by doing a paint job or not sealing it property properly is kind of daunting especially when you there's i just went through this video for 45 minutes about the 8,000 different ways you can do it well which one's better and maybe we'll do that maybe we'll do the uv resin we'll do clear coat and we'll do polyurethane we'll test all of them underwater maybe my method clear coat sucks. I don't think it does because none of my boats have swelled up and warped yet, but whatever. I'm just trying to find a cheap er, less messy, less crap you have to have, less sanding way to seal these boats. Um, there are other ways in the real boat world, like teaking and certain uh, wood methods which there's people out there know way more about that than I do. Um, I don't know if I do that with a model boat though. But, you know, it'd be fun to play with. I'm up for it. You know, anybody's got some suggestions out there. Uh, hey, this, what do you think of this? Have you tried this? Because I'm sure I've tried other ways. And I just don't remember them right now. Um, I built a lot of boats, so it's chances are good. Uh, aside from dipping it in hot wax, I've probably tried about every method of sealing to see which ones I like, and I just haven't found that warm fuzzy yet. Um, I do. My go-to right now is just shooting it with clear, because to me it seals it perfectly. It's a good undercoat for my paint and my primer. It sticks just fine. I don't have any peeling. Now, the important thing to remember here, real quick, when you spray one of these things with 2K clear or automotive two-part clear, you have to sand it. You, you can't just paint over it. That won't work. You have to take some 80 grit or 100 grit sandpaper and knock it. Knock the, knock the shine off. If you don't knock the shine off, it will not paint very well. I mean, it will. It'll look good for a minute. You get it out in the sun, get some expansion, it's going to peel off, and that's a bad day to sue. Then you got to strip your whole boat down and start the whole thing over uh, as far as the finish and sealing. So, yeah, you do have to still, even if you seal this boat and it looks beautiful, like a clear coat, like the rigger does. It's pretty much flawless on the clear. Um, but if I go to paint over a high gloss finish with no stiction, you know, you got no, no teeth in it, your paint's not going to stick. You'll be able to peel it off. I don't care what the chemical reaction is, unless it's self-etching, which they don't make a self-etching paint to my knowledge. Make a self-etching primer. That's a whole other topic. But so you do. You don't want any shine. I don't know if you can see this or not, 
I already sanded this a little bit, but there's shiny stuff. You can't have no shine. Shine's a bad day, all right? So we're gonna start focusing on that a little bit more because when you build a boat, you build a boat. I'm sorry, whether it's a cracker box, a hydroplane, yes, hydroplanes are trickier. There are, like when I built my backlashes, you know, there's certain little techniques that do help, but at the end of the day, you still got a bunch of sticks. You still got a bunch of epoxy. You're putting shit together and hoping it works. Um, whether it's this boat was reasonably easy until the finishing part, then it's just a sanding nightmare. Um, crackers, easy. The SS is super easy. Actually, anything from Zoop Kits, in my opinion, is easy. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I, that's why one of the reasons I love them so much. Um, then you get in the ML Boat Works, you know, Blazer Marine, much more intricate. And does it need to be? No, not really. But in some cases, yes. But building a boat's building a boat. I can sit here for the next 10 years and video every boat I build. And you guys are like, oh, yeah. Well, that's just like I did with the cracker. Well, yeah, it's wood and glue. But the finishing process and the sealing process and the gear, we're going to focus more this summer on the gear and the, you know, whether it's an electronic, electric boat, which I'm not an authority by any stretch on that. But. I've built a zillion electric boats. I really have, and I enjoy them to a point. Uh, but it fades fast with me. I like my gassers, as we know. But we're going to go over everything. And I think that stuff, the knowledge, how the engines work, how the motors and the ESCs work, programming the ESCs, doing all that stuff, the sealing of the boat, all those things that are not as cut and dry as just sticking stuff together with glue. So we have a lot of cool stuff coming up. We're going to maiden that rigor today, I'm hoping. Um, the water's beautiful out there, and we just got a little bit left to do. Uh, we'll try and get the bottom of this guy painted today. We'll see how that goes. Um, and that's really about it. So I'll talk to you probably later today, and keep the dry side up, kids. Bye.